Hi, my name is Polly Frenchu and I teach here at Dunwoody College of Technology in the Electrical Construction and Maintenance Department. Today we're going to be learning about conduit and conduit bending. Now that we've completed a 90 degree bend, let's look at some other bends that you may have to do out there in the field. So we looked at some terminologies when we looked at a 90 degree bend. We look at a stub, stub take up, back take up, and of course our gain. Now we only get gain because we've done a 90 degree bend. What happens when we do less than a 90 degree bend? Whenever we do less than a 90 degree bend, we actually end up losing some of our conduit length. And we call that loss shrink. We get shrink every time we bend less than 90 degrees. Now some of the less than 90 degree bends that you'll see out there, we call we'll say one of them is called a kick. Okay, what a kick is, is I can take my 90 degree bend that I bent earlier, and let's just say I need to bring that 90 down or I need to bring it up. I'm able to kick it up slightly or kick it down slightly to fit into my box. Now whenever I do less than a 90 degree bend, I am going to bend with my bender in the upright position. Okay, if you recall, when we do a 90 degree bend, we're actually going to put our pipe on the floor and we're going to use our conduit in this position. Whenever I do less than a 90 degree bend, I want to have more ability to control my bending. So if I want to do a kick, which is anything less than 90 degree bend, I can just put it into, once again, my hook. I can make sure everything's level. And then I can just do a slight bend or a kick to make it change its level or its direction. So if I look at my pipe now and I want to put it into a box, I have now changed that height that's needed. That's what we call a kick. And with every kick, I'm going to lose a certain amount of pipe called shrink. So when I measure this, if I remember correctly, we had 34 and a half inches left. So if I measure it now with the kick, I'm going to see a slight difference in that length. So as I bend it down, I have what we call my shrink. And we were at 34 and a quarter, or 34 and a half, and we are now at 34 and an eighth. So that slight kick that I did, just a slight bend into the conduit, ended up costing me about a half an inch of my conduit length, hence my shrink. So kick is one of the methods we use, or one of the types of bends we use. Another type of bend what we use is called an offset. Okay, an offset is basically two identical bends changing either the direction or the height of my conduit. What an offset is, is I can either take, say, a 30 degree bend going up here, another 30 degree bend here to go past or over an obstruction. So this is what I would consider an offset. Unlike our 90s, offsets use different values to determine what if each of these points are going to be for me to mark. So when I do an offset, I actually have to have two other numbers. One is my multiplier, and of course, the other is my shrink. Unlike my 90 degree bend, shrink and multiplier does not come off of the size of the conduit, it comes off the degree of the bend. So if I want to do a 30 degree bend, I would have a different multiplier than if I used a 45 degree bend. If you recall on our bender, we have different degree markings. So whenever we're using an offset, we're going to come off of those various degree markings in order to bend it. So when we're going to do an offset, we want to keep in mind that multiplier and that shrink, so there are specific values that we will look at. For my multipliers, I have some specific numbers that I use. And these numbers are actually based off of trigonometry, which would make sense with it being degrees. 
So if I have a 30 degree bend, my multiplier is going to be 2. If I have a 45 degree bend, my multiplier is going to be 1.4. If I have a 22 and a half degree bend, which is real common in my three bend saddles or in my offsets, I'm going to be having a multiplier of approximately 2.5. So these are some very common multipliers that you'll see out there and that you'll use on a daily basis. My shrink goes along with these various degree markings. So if I have a 30 degree bend with a multiplier of 2, my shrink for that 30 degree bend is going to be 1 quarter inch. So when I have a 45 degree bend, my multiplier is going to be 1.4. My shrink will be 3 eighths of an inch. And when I'm using a 22 and a half degree bend, my multiplier is 2.5. My shrink then is going to be 3 sixteenths of an inch. What does that all mean? Okay, you've got multiplier, you've got shrink. How does that work when I'm bending conduit? Well, I'm going to show you how. I'm going to take a piece of conduit here, and I'm going to first show you on the board, and then I will actually bend it for you. So I have a length of conduit, and let's say that length is, oh, we'll say 40 inches again. So we have a 40-inch length of conduit. And let's say that my obstruction, what I want to go over, is about, say, 10 inches from this end. Okay, so I know I'm going to go 10 inches here. From this point to this point, I'm going to have a specific amount of, of an obstruction. So what I have to consider is how am I going to mark to take this conduit and make it go there. So without looking at shrink and say I just have a nice long piece of pipe, I can just put a mark at 10 inches. And I need to know what a second mark is, because I'm going to bend it there and there. So this would be my bend mark A. This would be my bend mark B. To figure out what my bend mark B is, I actually have to multiply this 10 inches by my multiplier. So if I multiply that times that, and because it's a higher value, I'm going to actually do a 45 degree bend. I take 10 times 1.4, I have 14 inches between mark A and mark B. So when I bend it, I'll use my arrow on point mark A. I'll have my conduit marked 14 inches back from that A mark or 24 inches at mark B. And I'll bend it. So let's see how that works in the real world. So we have a 10 inch obstruction. I have a piece of conduit here to do that 10 inch obstruction and I need to mark it. So I'm going to take my pen and I know I'm going to go back 10 inches and I need to raise it 10 inches. So I'm going to take my tape measure and I'll mark it at 10 inches. That's my mark A. Now I want to do a second mark, which is my mark B. I need that 14 inches back, so I'm going to have to take my tape measure and mark it at 24 inches. That 24 inches then is my mark B, or my second bend. When I bend a piece of conduit in an offset, I'm going to take my bender and I want to find my arrow. That arrow is going to match up to this mark A and this mark B. And we're also going to put the bender in the direction that I measured from. So I'll put my conduit in my hook. And once again, we're going less than that 90 degrees. So I'm going to be bending in an upright position with my bender reversed. I'm going to find my mark here 
and I'm going to make it line up with my arrow of my bender. And I'm going to bend it. Now we had determined this based upon my 45 degree angle. So I use the multiplier of 1.4. So I'm going to come off of this mark here and bend it down to that 45 degrees. So I'll bend it down. Notice how I'm keeping constant pressure with both my front hand and my back hand. And I'm going to mark it down to where it matches up to that 45 degree line. Now I go and I find my mark B. And I'm going to turn around my conduit and I'm going to match up mark B to that arrow. But because I want it to be an offset, I'm going to reverse that bend, that first bend going up. So I can get this type of a configuration for my offset going up to 10 inches. So I'm going to straighten this out, make sure I'm level, make sure it's square, and I'm going to bend it down and I'm going to bend again to that 45 degree line. And there we have a 10 inch offset. So I'm able to get this one over from a box over something like an object or a box or whatever it may be, changing the level or changing the direction. So that's how we do an offset bend. Now I can measure it to see if it held true. Okay. One of the things I want to check whenever I do an offset is I want to make sure I don't have anything out of level. When I have something out of level, we call it a dog leg. When I have a dog leg, I could have one of these pieces moving this way or one of these pieces that way. So you want to try and get it nice and lined up so that when you put it in, it's staying nice and tight with your wall. So we went off of our multiplier of 10, our multiplier 2 point, or 1.4 with a 10 inch obstruction. And did we get our 10 inch? Pretty close. We're at about nine and a half. So I may not have quite gotten 45s there. But notice how it's changing from one level to another level. I'm offsetting that piece of conduit. Allows me to go in from one box to another box. Now when I look at shrink, shrink is how much I lost in the length of my conduit. If all had held true, if I wanted to do a, 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 a perfect bend, I would have also looked at my 3 eighths of an inch and would have taken that into account if I needed a prescribed length on this side or prescribe length on this side. So you always need to think about that shrink. In the next segment, we're going to be looking at adding in and doing a specific bend where we can't cut and it has to be precise. And we'll actually be doing those calculations on the board in the next segment.